the last 18 months has been one long drawn out process of the left and the political class trying to sabotage and annul two of the biggest democratic votes ever. Brexit and Trump. Let the history books show this. Over a year after Trump won the election and they're still trying to remove him from office. Now we discover that months before the election, high level FBI agents were discussing an insurance policy to stop Trump in case he won. The insurance policy almost certainly being the contrived phony Russian collusion investigation. If they're unsuccessful at removing Trump via the Russian collusion hysteria, will they be successful at removing him via mere accusation of sexual harassment alone? I mean, Trump may have asked for a woman's phone number. Is it true he asked for your phone number? He may or may not have called a woman a rude word. And he says, I remember you. You were that woman from the airplane. Bill O'Reilly says fake victims are being offered hundreds of thousands of dollars to claim that they were sexually abused by Trump. There is a tape, Beck, an audio tape of a anti-Trump person offering $200,000 to a woman to accuse Donald Trump of untoward behavior. Because in this new world of guilty until proven, no, scratch that. Guilty if somebody points a finger at you. That's it. Accusation alone is enough to get the job done. They've glommed on to the hashtag MeToo outrage so they can redirect it to remove Trump as president. Roger Stone says only two cabinet members would vote against invoking the 25th Amendment, the provision by which the president's deemed unfit to serve and can be removed from office. Stone's even written a book called The Unmaking of the President about Trump's removal from office. He's expecting it to happen. So after the deluge of rape claims against Bill Clinton achieved nothing, they're actually going to try ousting Trump because some woman claimed that he touched her on a plane in the early 80s. Anything, anything will do to get rid of him. Apart from having an actual policy platform and waiting three years to win an election, because we can't have that, can we? Let's be honest, whether you're on the right or the left, no one really cares about these sexual assault accusations. No one cares about anything happening to Al Franken, so long as he's out of office. No one cares about the accusations against Roy Moore being investigated so long as he lost the election. You all get up there a moral grandstand about how much you care about the victims being believed. You don't give a shit about the victims. You want to exploit them to accomplish your political agenda. And that's it. Hashtag me too bollocks. More like me, me, me. Yeah, like you're leading a genuine societal crusade against the assault of women. Give me a break. The accusations are political weapons for you to take out your enemies. So save me the sanctimonious crap. This is exactly what I said would happen in my video last month before all this started. The preeminence of innocent until proven guilty is being jettisoned. Now, mere accusation alone is enough to ruin someone's career. Do you understand how dangerous that is? So having failed with everything else, you'll now see a deluge of fake sexual assault claims against Trump. But the agenda has always remained the same. A coup d'etat to remove a democratically elected president. Then there's Brexit. 18 months after we voted to leave the EU. And now this. Amendment 7. MPs will now get a vote to ignore Brexit. When Theresa the appeaser's crappy deal is presented to them, they can just vote it away. Puff, it's gone. Yeah, newsflash, we already had a vote on June 23rd, 2016, and you lost. Fucking deal with it. We voted to leave the European Union. All of it, and the government promised to implement our decision. Well, fucking implement it then. Look at these cretins celebrating their role in strangling the voice of a nation. They probably think they're heroes when in reality, they just spat on the very concept of the UK being a democracy. Now the elite are all hailing Amendment 7 as the first step towards the defeat of Brexit. What's the point in pretending we live in free countries anymore when the results of national referendums and elections can just be cancelled by the elite? What's the point? Even if you hate Brexit and Trump and think they're both terrible for their respective countries, surely you must understand the danger of living under a system in which votes don't count. Listen, we always knew there was propaganda, manipulation and corruption behind the scenes, but a vote was still a vote. At least when dodgy dictatorships in Africa or wherever steal an election from the outset, they don't waste everybody's time. At least they're honest and upfront about not being free countries. I mean, what recourse are we left with? 
How are people going to react? Why do you think many on the right are now using the left's tactics against them? What have we learned from you? Principles don't matter. Playing fair doesn't matter. Peaceful protests don't matter. Having the better argument doesn't matter. Votes don't matter. If democracy can be invalidated at the whim of the establishment's displeasure with the result, None of these things matter. We're entering into the age of a post-democratic world. And if we allow ourselves to be led into this nightmare, there's no coming back. Please click the big red button to subscribe. It really helps me when you do that. And click the bell to allow notifications so you never miss a new video.